Oh my Lord, Shri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. O oh, all pervading personality of Godhead. Uh, for my respectful obeisance is unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji, the original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes, temporarily manifested by reactions of the three modes of nature, appear factual although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Pujita Kaitro Tra Paramo Nimatsranam Satam Vedyam Vastavam Atra Vastu Shivadam Tapa Trayon Mimanam Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Kitre Kimva Parir Ishwaraha Sadyo Hriti Avurudite Tra Kriti Bihi Sususa Vistakshanat Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam, compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity, is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpatarur galitam falam. Sukamukad amrita dravya samyutam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Muhur ahoraska buvi bhavakaha. O expert and thoughtful man, relish shimad bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire to Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Shinvatam Svakata Krishna, including with liberated souls. Shinvatam Svakata Krishna. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Vidyam Taksto Bhadrani 
Vidunoti suhit satam. To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures. Or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita. Is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna. Lord Krishna, who is dwelling in everyone's heart, acts as a best wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta Presu Bhadresu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttamas Loke Bhakti Bhavati Naistiki in this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge as he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhavo kamaloba dayas chaye chete taranavidam Sitvam Satve Prasidati. By development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus, material lusts and avarice are diminished. Evam Prasana Manaso Bhagavad Bhakti Yogataha. Bhagavat Tattva Vigyanam Mukta Sangasya Jayate When these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness, becomes enlivened by devotional service, and understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate Hridaya Grantis Chidyante Sarva Samsaya Siyante Chashikarmani Drista Evat Manishwari Thus Bhagavad Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection and enables one to come at once to the stage of a Samsayam Samagram. understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth, Personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 15, verse number 21. Tadvai danusta ishvara saruto hayaste soham rati Nipatayo yata anumanti anamanti amamanti sarvam shane natad abud asad isharitam sarvam kame natad abud asad isharitam basman hutam kuhaka radham ivoptam usyam basman hutam Translation by Srila Prabhupada. I have the very same Gandiba bow, the same arrows, the same chariot drawn by the same horses, and I use them as the same Arjuna to whom all the kings offered their due respects. But in the absence of Lord Krishna, all of them, at a moment's notice, have become null and void. It is exactly like offering clarified butter on ashes. Accumulating money with a magic wand or sowing seeds on barren land. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. As we have discussed more than once, one should not be puffed up by borrowed plumes. This is a is a traditional English proverb. 
All energies and powers are derived from the supreme source, Lord Krishna, and they act as long as he desires and cease to function as soon as he withdraws. All electrical energies are received from the powerhouse. And as soon as the powerhouse stops supplying energy, the bulbs are of no use. In a moment's time, such energies can be generated or withdrawn by the supreme will of the Lord. Material civilization without the blessing of the Lord is child's play only. As long as the parents allow the child to play, it is all right. As soon as the parents withdraw, the child has to stop. Human civilization and all activities thereof must be dovetailed with the supreme blessing of the Lord. And without this blessing, all advancement of human civilization is like decoration on a dead body. It is said here that a dead civilization and its activities are something like clarified butter on ashes. The accumulation of money by a magic wand and sowing of seeds in a barren land. Sila Prabhupada Ki What's interesting here is that Arjuna is recognizing that in the absence of Krishna, all the incredible powers he had have been uh, taken back. So, uh, or null and void. Now, that is something that we should all be aware of. That while we have the opportunity to be Krishna conscious, we should take full advantage of it. Because that opportunity could be taken away from us at any time. And we've already heard that previously uh, in what we've read. Uh, Prabhupada is making this point, and not only Prabhupada, but Vyasadeva is, and, and Sukadeva Goswami are making this point very elaborately by this whole 15th chapter. Krishna consciousness, the, the ability to engage in Krishna consciousness is the greatest blessing a person can receive because it means that their sojourn in the material world is going to come to an end and they can go back to the spiritual world. But it depends on developing perfect character. In other words, spiritual life without following the regulative principles is useless. Following the regulative principles. Okay, someone's ringing the doorbell Following the regulative principles is the real, uh, let's say, life and soul of the spirit of spiritual life. Without following the regulative principles, we don't really have a spiritual life. And if we strictly follow the do's and don'ts, then all auspiciousness begins in our life. And things that would seem impossible for us to do become possible. That is called empowerment by the Lord. He gives the shakti or the strength and the power to do things, just like the powerhouse is supplying electricity. But they can cut it off anytime they want. And, and then you're, what good are the light bulbs? And what good is uh, putting ghee on ashes? Or what good is accumulating money by a magic wand. You can't accumulate it by a magic wand. You see. Or sowing seeds on barren land. You can sow them, but nothing will grow. Barren land means land that uh, there's no rain and there's no uh, biomass that supplies nutrients for, for seeds to grow. So, uh, all energies and powers are derived from the supreme source, Lord Krishna. And they act as long as he desires and cease to function as soon as he withdraws. So, we should 
Therefore, stay in contact with Krishna constantly. That is our real life. And the best way to stay in contact with Krishna is to chant Hare Krishna. Because there's no difference between the holy name and Krishna himself. And Krishna also says that he's not in the heart of the yogis. And uh, he's not, uh, he, but where is he? He's where his devotees are chanting his holy names. So that is what we should do on a regular basis, is constantly be chanting and hearing <coughs> about Krishna and take everything else out of our mind. And that doesn't mean you can't function in society, but what you're really focusing on is being Krishna conscious all the time and being always in relationship to Krishna and all your activities. So that brings up a point that uh, is very important. That is, Rupa Goswami says, Anasakta Shivishayan Yatarham Upayunjitaha. Nirbanda Krishna Sambande Yukta Vairagyam Katyate. That is, this conception of material world is very nicely explained by Srila Rupa Goswami, who says that when persons renounce the material world as illusory or false, without knowing that the material world is a manifestation of the Supreme Lord, their renunciation is of no value. Okay. The Vaishnavas, however, are free of attachment to this world because although the material world is generally accepted as an object of sense gratification, the Vaishnavas are not in favor of sense gratification and are therefore not attached to, the material, to material activities. The Vaishnava accepts this material world according to the regulative principles of the Vedic injunctions and works without attachment. Since the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the original cause of everything, the Vaishnava sees everything in relationship with Krishna, even in this material world. By such advanced knowledge, everything becomes spiritualized. In other words, everything in the material world is already spiritual, but due to our lack of knowledge, we see things as material. Now, how are we going to get that knowledge so we understand the real nature of the material world. It's by regularly hearing Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita. Unless we do this, we very easily become dull in intellectually. And we begin to see things materially. We don't see the relationship between matter and Krishna. Therefore, Prabhupada says that when a devotee becomes Krishna conscious, for the devotee, maya becomes yoga maya. Maya is what takes us away from Krishna. Yoga maya brings us close, closer to Krishna. So in the same way that the devotee begins to see the spiritual nature of matter, because matter used in the service of Krishna reveals its spiritual nature. And matter used and for the purpose of sense gratification, makes us dull. A cloud forms in our mind, and we don't see things clearly. Uh, Prabhupada also says that, you know, lust makes a person blind. Blind to the reality that our, by following the regulative principles and purely chanting Hare Krishna, we're connected to Krishna. But when we become lax at doing these things, we lose our connection to Krishna and we become preoccupied with maya. Maya means sense gratification. Maya means acting in an illusory state of mind, not knowing that death is always walking behind us, waiting to uh, basically capture us in, in, the, in, the, in those uh, merciless grip. So, therefore, the Vaishnava sees everything in relationship with Krishna, even in this material world. By such advanced knowledge, everything becomes spiritualized. 
In other words, everything in the material world is already spiritual. But due to our lack of knowledge, we see things as material. Now, what are some examples of this? Well, one example is what Prabhupada did. He comes to the Lower East Side in New York in the 1960s, right? 1965, 66, 67, 68. I was there also in the Lower East Side of New York in uh, 1967 and 68. It was a horrible place, full of sense gratification on a very low level, very, very low level. And all kinds of nonsense things were going on there. And I remember one day I was in the Lower East Side I was walking down the street, and I see a door open, and it was a storefront. And I looked in, and I saw people with robes and shaved heads, and I screamed, Buddhists, and walked away. That was, uh, that was the first temple of Viscon. But I was in such illusion, I didn't know what it was. And I, I thought they were Buddhists. And, and, and I said Buddhists in a really bad way, as if there's something wrong with it, and I walked away. That's illusion. That's, that was the type of illusion that was going on there. I mean, everyone was taking drugs. Everyone was doing all kinds of sinful things. But Prabhupada came there and established the spiritual world in that little, uh, little shop. And what was the name of that shop? Uh, Matchless gifts, yeah. So, wherever a devotee goes, it be that becomes my quinta. They know how to transform matter back to its spiritual quality. And that's what Prabhupada did. And because of that, from that little humble beginning in Matchless gifts, he developed a worldwide movement in a few years. Fortunately, I caught up to it a year and a half later. In, uh, in France. So, uh, and, and that's because Prabhupada spread the movement around the world. He inspired devotees to go places where they had never been before, even not understanding the language of that place. And they also did the same thing. They used matter in the service of Krishna and then, manifest, and then matter manifested its spiritual nature. So, just like, and there's another example that uh, if a person likes gold, then they don't reject gold earrings, gold bangles, or anything else made of gold simply because they're shaped differently from the original gold. Gold is gold. Right? So all living entities in the same way, are parts and parcels of the Supreme Lord, and they're qualitatively one. That means we're all souls, and we're part and parcel of the Supreme Soul, Krishna. Part and parcel means although we have the same spiritual nature, but yet we are individuals, just like Krishna is an individual. Otherwise, the word part and parcel wouldn't be used. So uh, the Mayavadi say everyone is qualitatively one. That means the jiva can become, the, the atma can become paramatma by some phony process of yoga or whatever. But that's not true. We are eternally part and parcels. That means we're eternally individual, individuals, and Krishna is eternally an individual. So all the living entities are qualitatively one, but they are now differently shaped in 8,400,000 species of life, just like many different ornaments are made from gold, from the same source of gold. So if a person is, an interest, is interested in gold, then he accepts all the differently shapes, different shapes of gold, like earrings and rings and necklaces and so forth, also as gold. 
So a Vaishnava knows that all living entities are of the same quality as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, he accepts all living entities as eternal servants of God. That was the vision of Prabhupada when he came to America. He did not see hippies. He did not see blacks, whites, Chinese, uh, this or that. He saw living entities that are all parts and parcels of Krishna. So, therefore, uh, all living entities are accepted as eternal servants of Krishna. Then, uh, one has the opportunity to serve Krishna uh, and to help others become devotees of Krishna. They don't say, well, you know, only white people should be devotees of Krishna. Other, others are not qualified because they're, they're not on the level. No, that's, that's nonsense. Everyone, including the, like Lord Chaitanya, he, he liberated trees. He liberated a dog. He liberated tigers and lions and rabbits and deer, you see. Because he didn't see Oh, these are animals, they're, they're, they have no intelligence, uh, they can't become Krishna conscious. No. Well, of course, we don't have the power to turn animals into pure devotees and send them back to Godhead. But Lord Chaitanya did. Because that's, that's more proof that all living entities are part and parcel of Krishna. So, therefore... Uh, The mind of the living entities in this material world are agitated right now by the three modes of nature. And therefore, we're transmigrating from one body to another, as if in a dream. But when our consciousness is changed to Krishna consciousness, then immediately we fix Krishna in our heart, just like Every morning we're saying that, uh, let me just quote that. The last line of the first uh, verse says that uh, this is the second verse or the third verse? Let's see. Yeah. By this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Okay. So, Krishna is already in the heart, but we're not aware of it due to the influence of the modes of material nature. And we think that uh, there's just, you know, plumbing in the heart. There's, there's, it's just a pump. And the, uh, it has a, uh, different chambers, and it, and it beats, and, and it pumps blood. No, it's, but the heart is the seat of Krishna, the Paramatma, and our soul. So then, by hearing and chanting and associating with devotees, then we reestablish Krishna in our heart. We become aware of the presence of Krishna in our heart. That is... Uh, uh, extremely important because then we also can see that Krishna is in the heart of every other living entity. And that's called universal vision of the Supreme Lord. So we'll talk more about this. It's very interesting because without this universal vision of Krishna in the heart of every living entity, even in every atom of the universe, we cannot become a su successful preacher. We will discriminate based on bodies, rather than uh, see the unity of everything in relationship to Krishna. Srila Prabhupada, B.E.J. Are there any questions? Honey ball, okay. Glory to Prabhupada.